Kevin was a young man from a small town in India. He had always been fascinated by the English language. Growing up, he listened to English songs, watched English movies, and dreamed of one day being able to speak the language fluently. However, in his town, very few people spoke English, and he never had the chance to practice. So, while he knew a few words and basic phrases, he never felt confident speaking or understanding the language. One day, Kevin received an exciting opportunity. He was offered a job in the United States. He knew this was his chance to finally improve his English. The job required him to communicate in English every day, both at work and in his daily life. But there was a challenge. Kevin had only five months to improve his English before he would need to speak it fluently in his job. He felt both excited and nervous. He had never lived in another country before, and he knew that learning English would be difficult, but he was determined to succeed. The day he arrived in the U.S., Kevin could already feel the difference. Everything was in English, signs, conversations, menus at restaurants, and people spoke quickly. He had trouble understanding the accents, and sometimes he felt lost. He realized that his journey to fluency would be much harder than he had imagined. But Kevin was not the type to give up easily. The first few days in the U.S. were overwhelming. At work, he struggled to understand his colleagues. They used words and expressions he had never heard before. Sometimes he would smile and nod even when he didn't fully understand what they were saying. Outside of work, ordering food, asking for directions, or even chatting with strangers in the grocery store felt like huge challenges. Kevin knew he needed to come up with a plan. If he wanted to speak English fluently in five months, he had to work hard every day. He couldn't just rely on his job to improve his skills. He had to practice outside of work as well. So, Kevin made a decision. He would dedicate himself to learning English, no matter how difficult it became. Over the next five months, Kevin would follow a structured plan to improve his English. He would focus on building his vocabulary, practicing his listening skills, and speaking out loud as often as possible. He would also find people to practice with and immerse himself in English, making it a part of his daily life. This is the story of how Kevin started his journey to English fluency. How he went from feeling lost and confused in a new country to becoming confident and comfortable speaking English. His goal was not just to speak the language, but to express himself clearly and understand others fully. Though five months may seem like a short time, Kevin knew that with the right approach, he could make significant progress. Would he reach fluency by the end of this journey? Only time would tell, but one thing was certain. Kevin was ready to give it his all. What is fluency? Before Kevin embarked on his journey to the United States, he often wondered, what does it mean to be fluent in English? Like many learners, he had his own ideas about what fluency was. In his mind, fluency meant speaking English perfectly, with no mistakes, and understanding everything that native speakers said without any confusion. He thought that being fluent meant being able to respond quickly and sound like a native speaker. To Kevin, fluency seemed like a distant goal something that only people who had lived in English-speaking countries for many years could achieve. In India, Kevin had heard stories of people who traveled abroad and came back speaking English with ease. They spoke quickly, with a flow that seemed effortless. This was what Kevin imagined fluency to be. No pauses, no searching for words, and perfect pronunciation. He had seen English movies where characters spoke fast, using complex vocabulary and slang. And he thought to himself, one day, I'll be able to speak like that. But at the same time, it seemed like a huge challenge. How could he, someone who had only studied English in school, reach that level of skill? Kevin's perception of fluency was also shaped by the English classes he took as a student. In school, his teachers emphasized grammar rules 
and vocabulary. While Cavan learned how to write proper sentences and understand formal English, he didn't get much practice with speaking or listening in real-life situations. When he thought of fluency, he imagined it as mastering every grammar rule and knowing the meaning of every word. But deep down, he knew that even if he knew the rules, it wouldn't necessarily make him fluent in conversation. As Cavan prepared for his trip to the U.S., he began to do more research on what fluency actually meant. He read articles and watched videos where language experts talked about fluency. To his surprise, he discovered that fluency wasn't about perfection at all. He learned that even native speakers make mistakes when they talk. They might pause to think, use filler words like um and uh, or correct themselves mid-sentence. Fluency, he realized, was not about being perfect, but about being able to communicate smoothly and effectively. Fluency, he learned, is the ability to express yourself clearly and understand others, even if you make small mistakes along the way. It's about being comfortable with the language, being able to think in English, respond naturally, and hold a conversation without feeling overwhelmed. Fluency involves being able to navigate different situations, whether it's chatting with a friend, giving directions to a stranger, or participating in a meeting at work. It's not about speaking fast or knowing every word in the dictionary. It's about being confident in your ability to communicate. This new understanding of fluency gave Kevin some relief. He realized that he didn't need to be perfect to be fluent. Instead of focusing on speaking without mistakes, he could focus on improving his ability to communicate. He could practice expressing his thoughts more clearly and work on understanding spoken English better. He didn't need to rush or try to sound like a native speaker right away. Fluency was a process, not a destination. Kevin also began to see fluency as something personal. Every person's fluency journey is different and it depends on their needs and goals. For Kevin, fluency meant being able to do his job effectively in English and feel comfortable living in an English-speaking country. He didn't need to speak like a native speaker or know every slang term to be fluent. He just needed to be able to express his ideas and understand what others were saying. Fluency, he realized, wasn't a one-size-fits-all concept. It could look different for each learner. As Cavan boarded his flight to the United States, he carried this new perspective with him. He was excited to start improving his English and working towards fluency, but he no longer felt the pressure to be perfect. He knew that the journey would take time and effort, and that fluency was something he would achieve gradually. Cavan was ready to focus on communicating, learning from his mistakes, and becoming more confident in his English-speaking abilities. Ultimately, Cavan learned that fluency is about progress, not perfection. It's about being able to connect with others through language, share ideas, and understand the world around you. And, most importantly, it's about having the confidence to keep improving, even when things feel difficult. With this mindset, Cavan knew he was ready to take on the challenge of learning English in a new country, and he was excited to see how far he could go in five months. Cavan's plan? Setting goals. As Cavan stepped off the plane and into the bustling streets of New York City, his heart raced with excitement and anticipation. He had set himself a bold goal, to speak English fluently within just five months. The challenge seemed daunting, but Cavan was filled with enthusiasm and hope. He was determined to immerse himself fully in the language and culture, and he believed that with hard work and dedication, he could reach his goal. Before leaving India, Cavan had spent hours researching how to learn a language quickly. He read about different methods, strategies, and success stories from other language learners. Many people said that it was possible to learn English fluently in a short amount of time if you dedicated yourself to it completely. Inspired by their experiences, 
Cabin had created a detailed plan for himself, outlining everything he needed to do to achieve fluency within five months. One of the first things Cabin did was set clear, specific goals for himself. He knew that having a vague goal like learn English wouldn't be enough to keep him motivated. Instead, he needed measurable milestones to track his progress along the way. His ultimate goal was to be able to have fluent conversations with native speakers, but he also wanted to break that goal down into smaller, more manageable tasks. Cabin's first goal was to improve his vocabulary. He knew that words were the foundation of any language, and the more words he learned, the easier it would be to express himself. He set a target of learning at least 20 new words every day, focusing on practical vocabulary that he could use in everyday situations. He decided to keep a notebook with him at all times, jotting down any new words he came across during his day. Whether it was from reading a sign, listening to a conversation, or watching a video, Kevin would write down the word, its meaning, and an example sentence to help him remember it. By the end of five months, he hoped to have learned over 3,000 new words, giving him a solid foundation in English vocabulary. In addition to expanding his vocabulary, Kevin also set a goal to improve his speaking skills. He knew that just learning words wasn't enough. He needed to practice using them in real conversations. Kevin committed to speaking English every day even if it meant talking to himself when there was no one else around. He promised himself that he would try to have at least one conversation in English every day, whether it was with a local shopkeeper, a fellow student, or a stranger he met on the subway. Kevin also planned to join an English-speaking club where he could meet other learners and practice speaking in a supportive environment. He believed that the more he practiced speaking out loud, the more confident and fluent he would become. Listening comprehension was another key area Cavan wanted to focus on. He set a goal of listening to English for at least one hour every day. This could be in the form of watching movies, listening to podcasts, or even eavesdropping on conversations in public places. Cavan knew that improving his listening skills would help him understand native speakers better, especially when they spoke quickly or use slang. He planned to start by listening to slower, more simplified English and gradually work his way up to faster, more complex conversations. Kevin's next goal was to work on his grammar. While he didn't want to focus too much on being perfect, he knew that having a good understanding of basic grammar rules would help him speak more clearly and confidently. He decided to spend 30 minutes each day reviewing grammar focusing on one specific topic at a time. He would start with the basics, like verb tenses and sentence structure, and gradually move on to more advanced topics. By breaking it down into small, manageable chunks, Kevin believed he could improve his grammar without feeling overwhelmed. To keep himself motivated, Kevin set weekly and monthly goals. At the end of each week, he would review what he had learned celebrate his progress, and set new targets for the following week. Every month, he would evaluate his overall progress and adjust his plan if needed. For example, if he felt that his listening skills were improving faster than his speaking skills, he might dedicate more time to speaking practice. This flexibility allowed him to stay focused while also adapting to his needs as he learned more about his strengths and weaknesses. Despite his careful planning, Kevin knew that learning a language wasn't always easy. There would be days when he felt frustrated or discouraged, and times when it seemed like he wasn't making any progress at all. But Kevin was determined to stay positive and keep pushing forward. He reminded himself that learning a language was a marathon, not a sprint, and that every small step he took was bringing him closer to his goal. He had read about the importance of patience and persistence in language learning, and he was committed to staying the course, no matter how challenging it might be. 
Kevin also made a promise to himself to stay curious and enjoy the learning process. Instead of seeing his five-month goal as a race against time, he wanted to savor every opportunity to learn something new. Whether it was discovering a new word, mastering a tricky grammar rule, or having a successful conversation in English, Kevin was determined to celebrate each small victory along the way. He believed that keeping a positive attitude would help him stay motivated, even when progress seemed slow. As Kevin settled into his new life in the United States, his excitement and determination grew stronger. He was eager to put his plan into action and see how much progress he could make in just five months. With clear goals, a well-structured plan, and a positive mindset, Kevin felt ready to take on the challenge of learning English and achieving fluency. Though he knew it wouldn't be easy, he was confident that with hard work, persistence, and a little bit of patience, he could make his dream of speaking English fluently a reality. Quantity over perfection. Kevin had always been a bit of a perfectionist. Back in India, whenever he tried to speak English, he would focus so much on saying everything perfectly that he ended up speaking very little. He was always afraid of making mistakes. What if he used the wrong word? Or what if his grammar was off? The fear of not being perfect held him back from practicing, and as a result, his speaking skills never improved as much as he wanted them to. But everything changed when Kevin arrived in the United States. One of the first lessons he learned in his language journey was that when it comes to speaking a new language, quantity is far more important than perfection. This idea came as a relief to Kevin. Instead of worrying about every little mistake, he was now encouraged to focus on speaking as much as possible, even if his sentences weren't perfect. His teacher explained, the more you speak, the better you will get. It's okay to make mistakes. In fact, making mistakes is a sign that you're learning. Kevin began to understand that fluency isn't about knowing every grammar rule or having a perfect accent. It's about being able to communicate, even if your speech isn't flawless. So, Kevin decided to make a change. Instead of aiming for perfect English, he would aim for more English. This mindset shift was liberating. It gave him the freedom to speak without constantly self-correcting. If he didn't know the exact word, he would try to describe what he meant using simpler words. If he made a grammar mistake, he wouldn't stop the conversation to fix it. Instead, he would keep going, knowing that practice was more valuable than perfection. Kevin set a daily goal for himself. Speak English as much as possible, no matter how imperfect it was. Whether he was ordering food at a restaurant, asking for directions, or chatting with a stranger, he would seize every opportunity to practice. At first, it was uncomfortable. There were moments when Kevin felt embarrassed, especially when people corrected him or didn't understand him. But over time, he began to care less about these moments. Each conversation, no matter how awkward, was a step toward fluency. In fact, Kevin soon realized that people were generally very understanding and patient when he made mistakes. Most of the time, they were more interested in what he was saying than how he was saying it. This gave him even more confidence to keep talking even when his sentences weren't perfect. As Kevin embraced the idea of quantity over perfection, he noticed something remarkable. The more he spoke, the better he became. His sentences started to flow more naturally, and he found himself speaking faster and with more confidence. He wasn't worried about making every sentence grammatically correct anymore. He was more focused on expressing his thoughts and getting his message across. Of course, Kevin still wanted to improve his grammar and vocabulary, but he understood that these things would come with time. For now, his primary goal was to keep talking, no matter what. He realized that fluency wasn't something that happened overnight. It was something that developed through practice, repetition, and persistence. 
In addition to speaking more, Kevin also learned the importance of listening more. The more he exposed himself to English conversations, the better he became at understanding different accents, phrases, and expressions. This, in turn, helped him become a better speaker. He started watching more TV shows and movies, not only to listen but to imitate the way native speakers talked. This helped him improve his pronunciation and rhythm, making his speech sound more natural over time. Kevin also noticed that by focusing on speaking more, he was gaining something far more valuable than perfect grammar. Confidence. With each conversation, his fear of making mistakes faded away, and his confidence grew stronger. He realized that being able to communicate was much more important than being perfect. At the end of each day, Kevin would reflect on the conversations he had. Instead of beating himself up over the mistakes he made, he celebrated the fact that he had spoken more English than the day before. He knew that every word he said, even if it wasn't perfect, was bringing him closer to his goal of fluency. By focusing on quantity over perfection, Kevin was able to let go of his fear of mistakes and truly immerse himself in the language. He understood that fluency wasn't about speaking perfectly. It was about speaking confidently, consistently, and as often as possible. And with this new mindset, Kevin was well on his way to achieving his goal of speaking English fluently. Listening, the key to understanding. When Kevin first arrived in the United States, one of the biggest challenges he faced wasn't speaking English. It was understanding it. He quickly realized that being able to speak and being able to understand were two different skills. Native speakers often spoke fast, used slang, and had accents that made it hard for Kevin to follow their conversations. He could pick out a few words here and there, but sometimes it felt like they were speaking a completely different language. Kevin knew that to improve his speaking skills, he also needed to improve his listening skills. His teacher explained that listening is one of the most important parts of learning a language. The more you listen, she said, the better you'll understand, and the more natural your own speech will become. Kevin was determined to improve, so he set a goal for himself, to listen to English every single day. He started with things that were simple and familiar. Kevin listened to recordings of everyday conversations and watch TV shows with subtitles. At first, he found it difficult to keep up with the fast pace of native speakers, but his teacher reminded him to be patient. Don't worry if you don't understand everything, she said. Focus on catching key words and phrases. Over time, your brain will start to fill in the gaps. Kevin realized that he didn't need to understand every single word to follow a conversation. He just needed to catch the important words, those that conveyed the main ideas. As he listened more and more, his brain began to adjust to the rhythm of English. Slowly but surely, he found himself understanding more than just individual words. He started to grasp the overall meaning of what people were saying. To build his listening skills, Kevin adopted a daily routine. Every morning, he would listen to a podcast designed for English learners while having breakfast. He chose topics that interested him, technology, sports, and travel, because it made the learning process more enjoyable. On his way to work, he would listen to the radio or short English news clips. At night, he would watch a short episode of a TV series without subtitles, challenging himself to rely only on his listening skills. One of the techniques Kevin used to improve was active listening. Instead of just passively hearing the words, he paid close attention to the sounds, the intonation, and the rhythm of the language. He began to notice the natural pauses people made when they spoke and how they stressed certain words to show importance. He realized that listening wasn't just about understanding the words, but also about understanding the music of the language. As part of his practice, Kevin also began watching YouTube videos where native speakers spoke slowly 
and clearly. These videos were a great help, especially when he could follow along with the subtitles. He would watch the video once with the subtitles on to understand the content, and then he would watch it again without subtitles to test his listening. Gradually, he started to watch regular YouTube videos without relying on subtitles at all. Kevin didn't limit himself to just listening to native speakers. He also listened to other learners who were improving their English. This helped him feel more comfortable with his own progress. Hearing others make mistakes and still communicate effectively gave him the confidence to keep pushing forward. As he continued to listen to English every day, Kevin's understanding improved dramatically. He found himself catching words and phrases that used to fly right past him. Conversations that once felt overwhelming started to feel more manageable. He noticed that he was able to follow along in group discussions at work, even when people spoke quickly. Kevin also learned that repetition was key. When he listened to the same content multiple times, he found that he could catch more details with each listen. For example, when watching his favorite TV show, he would first watch it with subtitles, then without, and finally, he would watch it again just to see how much he could understand without any assistance. This repetition helped solidify new vocabulary and phrases in his mind. There were still times when Kevin didn't understand everything. Some accents were harder to follow, and certain phrases were completely new to him. But instead of feeling frustrated, Kevin learned to embrace these moments as part of the learning process. His teacher reminded him, You don't need to understand everything right away. The important thing is that you're improving bit by bit every day. By dedicating time to listening daily, Kevin was no longer overwhelmed by the speed of native speakers. He found himself able to pick up on the nuances of different accents and regional variations of English. The practice also helped him with his own speaking, as he naturally started imitating the patterns and expressions he heard. For Kevin, listening became not just a task for learning English, but a habit that he enjoyed. Whether it was podcasts, songs, movies, or conversations with coworkers, each listening experience brought him closer to his goal of fluency. He learned to trust the process, knowing that the more he listened, the easier English would become. By making listening a priority, Kevin had taken a major step toward fluency, and though he still had a long way to go, his progress in just a few months was remarkable. Repetition. Practice makes perfect. Kevin quickly realized that one of the most powerful tools in his language learning journey was repetition. His teacher often reminded him, The more you repeat something, the easier it becomes. At first, Kevin found this advice simple. But as he continued his English studies, he saw just how effective it was. Repetition wasn't just about memorizing words. It was about gaining confidence and fluency with the language. When Kevin learned a new word or phrase, he would make sure to repeat it several times throughout the day. He would write it down, say it out loud, and try to use it in conversation. The first few times he used new words, it felt awkward and forced, but the more he practiced, the more natural it became. For Kevin, it was important not just to remember words, but to feel comfortable using them in real-life situations. One of the methods that worked best for Kevin was creating flashcards. On each card, he wrote a new word or phrase on one side, and its meaning or a sentence using that word on the other. Every day, he would go through his flashcards, repeating each word out loud and using it in a sentence. This constant review helped him remember vocabulary better and, most importantly, helped him use those words more naturally in conversation. Kevin also applied the principle of repetition to his listening practice. When he watched a video or listened to a podcast, he didn't just listen once and move on. Instead, he would play the same clip multiple times. The first time, he focused on understanding the general meaning. The second time, 
He paid attention to any new vocabulary or phrases. By the third or fourth time, he could fully understand the content and even predict what the speaker was going to say. This repetitive listening process helped Kevin not only understand better, but also improve his pronunciation. As he listened to the same phrases over and over, he began to notice the way native speakers stress certain words or how they connected sounds between words. Kevin would then imitate what he heard, practicing the rhythm and intonation of native speech until he felt comfortable saying the phrases himself. One of the challenges Kevin faced was learning phrasal verbs, which are commonly used in English but often confusing for learners. Words like give up, turn down, or look after didn't always make sense when he first encountered them. However, instead of just memorizing the meanings, Kevin repeated these phrasal verbs and sentences until they became familiar. He practiced using them in different contexts, both when speaking with friends and when writing in his journal. Over time, these once difficult phrases became part of his everyday English. Kevin's teacher also encouraged him to practice repeating entire sentences. This helped him focus on sentence structure, grammar, and pronunciation all at once. Whenever he came across a useful sentence, whether in a book, a movie, or a conversation, he would write it down and repeat it multiple times throughout the day. The more he repeated, the more natural these sentence patterns became. In addition to learning new words and phrases, Kevin also found value in repeating the same conversations. When he spoke with coworkers or friends, he often found himself having similar conversations about work, food, or weekend plans. Instead of trying to create new sentences each time, Kevin repeated phrases he had already learned, refining his delivery and improving his confidence. This repetition allowed him to speak more fluently because he wasn't always struggling to find the right words. He already knew them. Kevin also discovered that repeating mistakes was part of the learning process. Sometimes, even after practicing a word or phrase many times, he would still make errors when using it in conversation. Instead of getting discouraged, Kevin viewed these mistakes as opportunities to learn. After each mistake, he would repeat the correct version to himself until it became second nature. One technique that Kevin particularly enjoyed was shadowing, a practice where he repeated what he heard as soon as possible. He would watch videos or listen to recordings and then immediately try to imitate the speaker, repeating everything they said. This technique helped him improve his pronunciation and speech flow, allowing him to sound more like a native speaker over time. At first, he struggled to keep up with the fast pace of the speakers, but with practice, his ability to repeat the words quickly improved. Through repetition, Kevin noticed that learning became automatic. Words, phrases, and even entire sentences that once seemed difficult now rolled off his tongue effortlessly. The more he repeated something, the less he had to think about it. Instead of hesitating or worrying about making mistakes, Kevin was able to speak with more confidence and ease. Repetition didn't just improve Kevin's speaking skills. It also helped him feel more comfortable with the language as a whole. He started to notice that many of the phrases and expressions he heard in one context would appear again in another. This gave him a sense of familiarity with the language reducing the fear he once had when speaking to native English speakers. By practicing repetition in his daily routine, Kevin discovered that learning English wasn't about memorizing endless lists of vocabulary or grammar rules. It was about exposing himself to the language repeatedly, using it as often as possible, and gradually becoming more comfortable with it. Repetition allowed him to reinforce what he had learned turning unfamiliar words and phrases into natural parts of his vocabulary. With every day that passed, Kevin felt more at ease with English, thanks to the power of repetition. Though he wasn't fluent yet, 
he knew that with continued practice, he was getting closer to his goal. Each repeated word, phrase, or sentence brought him one step closer to speaking English with confidence. Speak out loud. Don't be shy. One of the most important lessons Kevin learned during his journey to master English was the importance of speaking out loud, even when he wasn't completely confident in what he was saying. At the beginning of his trip to the United States, Kevin often felt hesitant. He would listen carefully to conversations around him, but when it came time to speak, he would second-guess himself. He was afraid of making mistakes, mispronouncing words, or using the wrong grammar. This fear held him back, and for a while, Kevin found himself avoiding conversations altogether. However, his teacher at the language school gave him a piece of advice that changed his mindset. It's okay to make mistakes. The key is to speak out loud, even if you're not sure of every word. The more you speak, the more you'll improve. At first, this advice seemed easier said than done. Kevin had spent years learning English in India, mostly focusing on reading and writing. Speaking was a different challenge altogether. And the idea of speaking out loud in front of fluent English speakers was intimidating. But Kevin knew that if he wanted to reach his goal of fluency, he had to overcome this fear. To help himself get comfortable, Kevin began practicing English by talking to himself when he was alone. He would describe what he was doing as he moved through his day. I'm making breakfast now. I'm going to the store to buy groceries. I need to study English today. These small sentences allowed him to practice forming thoughts in English without the pressure of being in a conversation. At first, it felt strange, but over time, he realized that this simple act of speaking out loud helped him become more familiar with the language. Even if he made mistakes, there was no one to judge him, and this gave him the confidence to keep practicing. Kevin also found that reading out loud was a helpful exercise. Whether he was reading a book, an article, or even the back of a cereal box, he would read the words out loud instead of just in his head. This allowed him to practice pronunciation and intonation, which are key elements of speaking fluently. When reading silently, it was easy to skip over difficult words or phrases, but when he read out loud, he had to face each word head on, practicing how to say it correctly. By repeating this process, Kevin became more familiar with the sound and rhythm of English. Another strategy Kevin used was recording himself speaking. He would take his phone, open the voice recorder app, and talk about his day or share his thoughts on a topic. After recording, he would listen to the playback, paying attention to his pronunciation and sentence structure. At first, he cringed when he heard his own voice. He could clearly hear the mistakes he was making, and it was hard not to feel discouraged. But over time, Kevin saw this as an opportunity to self-correct. Listening to his own recordings helped him identify areas where he needed to improve, such as which words he was mispronouncing or when his grammar was off. It also gave him a sense of progress. Each time he listened, he could hear how his speaking was improving. As Kevin became more comfortable with speaking out loud in private, he decided it was time to take the next step, speaking out loud in public. At the language school, Kevin started participating more actively in group discussions and class activities. In the beginning, he still felt nervous, especially when speaking in front of his classmates, who seemed more confident and fluent than him. However, he reminded himself that the goal wasn't to be perfect. It was to practice. Slowly but surely, Kevin began to speak more frequently during class. He didn't worry as much about whether his sentences were perfect. Instead, he focused on making sure his message was understood. The more he spoke, the less anxious he felt. And soon... Participating in class discussions became something he looked forward to instead of something he dreaded. Kevin's teacher often reminded the class that fluency isn't about speaking perfectly. It's about communicating effectively. 
Native speakers make mistakes all the time. They pause, hesitate, and sometimes choose the wrong word. The important thing is to keep speaking. This advice stuck with Kevin, and he began to realize that making mistakes was part of the learning process. Each time he mispronounced a word or used the wrong verb tense, he learned something new. These mistakes became stepping stones toward fluency rather than obstacles. Kevin also found opportunities to practice speaking out loud with his co-workers and new friends in the United States. At first, he hesitated to join conversations at work, afraid that his English wouldn't be good enough. But he soon discovered that most people were patient and understanding. They appreciated his effort and didn't mind if he made a mistake here or there. The more he spoke with his co-workers, the more comfortable he became. Whether it was during lunch breaks or casual conversations in the office, Kevin made it a point to speak as much as possible. In addition, Kevin made a habit of asking questions when he didn't understand something. If a coworker used a word or phrase he wasn't familiar with, Kevin would ask them to explain it. This not only helped him expand his vocabulary, but also gave him more opportunities to practice speaking. He realized that people were more than happy to help him learn, and this made him feel more confident about speaking out loud. One of the most valuable lessons Kevin learned was that confidence grows with practice. The more he spoke out loud, the more comfortable he became with the language. Even though he wasn't fluent yet, he could feel himself improving every day. By speaking out loud, even when he wasn't sure of every word, Kevin was training his brain to think in English. He wasn't just learning the language, he was using it. Kevin's journey to speaking fluently wasn't easy, but by speaking out loud every day, he made significant progress. He realized that speaking out loud, even when he wasn't completely confident, was the key to unlocking his potential. Over time, his fear of making mistakes faded and he became more confident in his ability to communicate in English. Though he hadn't yet achieved full fluency, Kevin knew that he was well on his way, thanks to the power of speaking out loud, immersing himself in English. One of the biggest turning points in Kevin's journey to fluency came when he fully embraced the idea of immersion. From the moment he stepped foot in the United States, he realized that simply attending English classes wasn't enough. He needed to surround himself with the language as much as possible if he wanted to make significant progress. Kevin understood that immersion meant living and breathing English, not just during his study hours, but throughout every part of his day. At first, this idea felt overwhelming. Back in India... Kevin had always thought of English as something to study, a subject that was separate from his daily life. But now, being in the U.S., English wasn't just something he learned in a classroom. It was all around him. The signs on the street, the conversations happening in cafes, the announcements on public transportation, everything was in English. Instead of feeling intimidated, Kevin decided to use this to his advantage. His first step toward immersion was making an effort to engage with his surroundings. Every day, as he walked to work or explored the city, he would read street signs, advertisements, and even menus in restaurants out loud to himself. He would listen carefully to conversations happening around him, picking up on common phrases and slang that he hadn't learned in class. When he didn't understand something, he would look it up or ask someone to explain it. This constant exposure to real-world English helped Kevin become more familiar with the language in its natural setting. One of the biggest benefits of living in the U.S. was that Kevin had constant access to English media. Instead of watching movies or listening to music in his native language, Kevin switched to watching TV shows, news, and movies entirely in English. He chose popular shows that people in the U.S. were watching so he could pick up on common expressions, cultural references, and even humor. 
At first, he used subtitles to help him understand, but over time, he challenged himself to watch without subtitles. This forced him to rely on his listening skills and context to grasp the meaning of conversations. Kevin also began listening to English podcasts and radio stations whenever he had free time. Whether he was commuting to work or doing chores at home, he would have English playing in the background. At first, it was difficult to keep up with the fast pace of native speakers. But as the weeks went by, Kevin noticed that his ability to understand spoken English was improving. He could follow conversations more easily, and words that had once seemed foreign started to sound familiar. One of the key parts of immersing himself in English was that Kevin made sure he wasn't just passively consuming the language. He was actively engaging with it. When he watched a movie, he would pause and repeat lines that were challenging, practicing the pronunciation and intonation. If he didn't understand a phrase, he would rewind and listen again until he got it right. This active approach to immersion helped him make faster progress than simply listening or watching without paying attention. Immersion also extended beyond media. Kevin made a conscious effort to surround himself with native speakers as much as possible. Instead of staying in his comfort zone and only socializing with other English learners or people from his home country, he started joining local clubs and attending social events where English was the primary language spoken. For example, he joined a community soccer team, which gave him the opportunity to engage in casual conversations with his teammates. At first, it was intimidating, but Kevin knew that the more time he spent around native speakers, the more natural English would become for him. He also tried to practice small interactions in English whenever he could, whether he was ordering coffee, asking for directions, or making small talk with coworkers. Kevin made it a point to initiate conversations in English. Every interaction, no matter how small, was an opportunity to practice, and Kevin made sure to take advantage of these moments. These daily conversations helped him gain confidence and made English feel like a regular part of his life, rather than just something he was learning. Another crucial aspect of immersion was that Kevin didn't shy away from challenging himself. Instead of only focusing on topics he was familiar with, he began reading news articles, watching documentaries, and listening to podcasts on subjects that were completely new to him. This helped him expand his vocabulary and improve his comprehension of more complex topics. For example, Kevin had always been interested in technology, so he started following tech news in English. At first, it was difficult to keep up with the specific terminology, but over time, he began to understand and even use these new words in conversations. Perhaps one of the most effective ways Kevin immersed himself in English was by staying with a host family. The family spoke only English, which gave Kevin the perfect environment to practice his language skills. He had no choice but to communicate in English every day, whether it was during dinner conversations, while running errands with his host family, or even when watching TV together. Living in an English-speaking household allowed Kevin to experience the language in its most authentic form. He learned how people used English in everyday life, including the casual, informal expressions that weren't taught in textbooks. As Kevin continued to immerse himself in the English-speaking world, he began to notice subtle changes in how he thought and communicated. Words that used to take him several seconds to translate in his head now came to him naturally. He started thinking in English more often, and he found that his responses and conversations were becoming faster and more fluid. The more he immersed himself in English, the less it felt like a foreign language and more like a second nature. This process of immersion wasn't easy. It required constant effort and dedication. There were times when Kevin felt mentally exhausted from being surrounded by English all day. But he knew that immersion was the key to mastering the language. 
And every day spent listening, speaking, and interacting in English brought him one step closer to fluency. By fully immersing himself in the language and culture of the United States, Cavan was able to make remarkable progress in his English journey. Although he hadn't yet achieved full fluency by the end of his five months, he was well on his way. The experience of living in an English-speaking environment had transformed his understanding of the language and boosted his confidence in ways he never imagined. Cavan knew that with continued immersion, fluency was within his reach. Finding people to practice with. As Cavan continued his journey to learn English, he realized one crucial thing. Practice makes perfect, but practicing with others makes it even better. Speaking English on his own, whether through self-study or immersion, was valuable, but it wasn't enough. He needed to engage in real conversations with other people to truly improve his skills. The challenge, however, was finding the right people to practice with. At first, Cavan felt hesitant about putting himself out there. Coming from a country where English wasn't the primary language, he worried that native speakers might be impatient with his slower speech or frequent mistakes. He also feared that other learners might not offer the kind of challenges he needed. But he quickly understood that practicing with both native speakers and fellow learners would give him a balance of experience, and he set out to find people who could help him in his goal. Cavan started by joining a local language exchange group. These groups were designed specifically for people like him, those who wanted to improve their language skills by practicing with others. Every week, the group would meet in a cafe or a park to engage in casual conversations. Some members were native English speakers, eager to learn a new language themselves while others were fellow learners from different parts of the world. This diversity made the practice sessions more dynamic, and Cavan found it incredibly valuable to talk to people with various accents and levels of proficiency. At first, the conversations were a bit awkward. Cavan often struggled to keep up with the flow of conversation, and sometimes he would get stuck searching for the right word. But the beauty of the language exchange group was that everyone was there to learn, and there was no judgment. The more he attended these sessions, the more comfortable he became. Over time, Cavan began to look forward to the group's meetings, as they gave him the opportunity to practice speaking in a relaxed and supportive environment. In addition to the language exchange group, Cavan also decided to make friends at work. He knew that surrounding himself with native speakers in his daily life would accelerate his learning. At first, it was difficult to break the ice with his co-workers, especially when they would talk quickly or use slang he didn't understand. However, Cavan found that being open and curious helped him connect with others. Whenever he didn't understand something, he would politely ask for clarification, and his co-workers were more than willing to help. In fact, many of them admired Cavan's dedication to learning English and were happy to have conversations with him during lunch breaks or after work. One key to Cavan's success was his ability to adapt to different speaking styles. His co-workers spoke with various accents, from American to British to Australian, which initially made it challenging for him to follow along. But instead of getting frustrated, Cavan viewed this as an opportunity to broaden his listening skills. He would pay close attention to the differences in pronunciation, intonation, and vocabulary, and this exposure helped him become more flexible in understanding English in different contexts. Cavan also sought out one-on-one -on -one practice with language tutors. He used online platforms to connect with native speakers who offered personalized lessons via video calls. These sessions allowed him to focus on his weak areas, such as pronunciation and sentence structure. The tutors gave him real-time feedback, correcting his mistakes in a way that classroom settings often didn't allow. Because these lessons were tailored to his individual needs, Cavan made faster progress than he had expected. The structured environment of one-on-one -on -one lessons 
combined with the informal practice of his group conversations, gave Cavan a well-rounded experience. Another strategy Cavan used was participating in online forums and social media groups for English learners. Platforms like Reddit, Facebook, and language learning apps allowed him to join global communities of people who were also learning English. These groups were a great place to ask questions, share resources, and engage in text-based conversations. While written conversations didn't replace the importance of speaking, they helped Cavan practice his grammar and vocabulary in a less stressful environment. Additionally, being part of these online communities gave Cavan a sense of belonging, as he was able to connect with people facing similar challenges. One day, Cavan met a new friend, Mark, through the language exchange group. Mark was a native English speaker who had recently moved to the city, and the two of them quickly bonded over their shared love of technology and soccer. Over time, their casual conversations turned into regular meetups, where they would practice English and talk about their interests. Having a language partner like Mark was incredibly beneficial for Kevin, as it allowed him to practice in a natural, informal setting. Mark would often point out small mistakes in Kevin's speech, helping him refine his language skills without making him feel embarrassed. Kevin also learned that practicing English wasn't just about improving his speaking skills. It was about building relationships. Through his practice sessions, he not only improved his language proficiency, but also made lasting friendships. His co-workers, language exchange partners, and online community members became part of his support system encouraging him to keep going even when he felt discouraged. By the end of five months, Kevin had found a solid group of people to practice with, each offering different perspectives and levels of challenge. These interactions had boosted his confidence, allowing him to engage in more complex conversations and express his thoughts more clearly. While he hadn't yet achieved complete fluency, Kevin knew he was well on his way. The relationships he had built through his practice sessions had been key to his progress, and they would continue to support him as he moved closer to his goal of fluency. Active listening. As Cavan's journey to improve his English continued, he learned that simply hearing words wasn't enough. He had to listen actively. Active listening meant going beyond just understanding the general idea of a conversation. It required him to focus on the details, pay attention to the intonation, and understand the context behind the words. Kevin realized this skill was essential for both comprehension and his own ability to respond effectively in conversations. He noticed that native speakers often didn't just communicate with words. They also used their tone of voice, expressions, and body language to add meaning. If he wanted to become a more effective English speaker, he needed to understand these subtleties. His teacher explained that active listening involved concentrating fully on what the other person was saying, instead of thinking about his next response or worrying about the words he didn't know. She taught him a few simple but powerful techniques to improve his listening skills. Focus on key words. Instead of trying to understand every single word in a conversation, Kevin learned to focus on the key words that carried the most important information. For example, in a sentence like, I'll meet you at the coffee shop on 5th Avenue at 3 p.m., the key words were coffee shop, 5th Avenue, and 3 p.m. The smaller, connecting words were less important, and even if he missed them, he could still understand the message. Listen for intonation and stress. One thing Kevin noticed early on was how much intonation, the rise and fall of a speaker's voice, changed the meaning of a sentence. For instance, if someone said, oh, really, with a rising tone, it usually meant they were surprised or questioning something. But if the same phrase was said with a flat or falling tone, it could mean they were uninterested or didn't believe what the other person said. Paying attention to these cues helped Kevin understand not just the words, 
but also the emotions and intentions behind them. Watch for context clues. Kevin also practiced using context clues to figure out the meaning of unfamiliar words. Instead of stopping the conversation every time he encountered a word he didn't know, he listened for surrounding words and phrases to help him make sense of it. For example, if someone said, I took the subway because my car broke down, even if Kevin didn't know the word subway, he could infer from the situation that it was a type of transportation. Ask clarifying questions. Active listening didn't mean staying silent if he didn't understand. Kevin learned the importance of asking questions when something wasn't clear. For instance, if he wasn't sure about what someone had said, he would politely ask, Could you repeat that? Or what does that mean? This not only helped him clarify information, but it also gave him more practice speaking English. To hone his active listening skills, Kevin used every opportunity he had to engage in conversations with native speakers. He practiced at his job, listening intently to his co-workers and making an effort to engage with them on both professional and personal topics. At first, he found it difficult to keep up, especially when multiple people were talking at once or using slang he wasn't familiar with. But over time, as he applied the techniques he had learned, he became better at picking out the key points and following the flow of the conversation. Outside of work, Kevin made a habit of listening to podcasts and news broadcasts in English. He started with slower, learner-friendly programs where the speakers enunciated clearly and used simple language. Then, as his listening improved, he moved on to more challenging content, like radio shows and news stations where the speech was faster and more complex. He would listen carefully, pausing the audio whenever he didn't understand something, and then replaying the segment until it made sense. This repetition helped reinforce the new words and phrases in his mind. Kevin also noticed how much body language played a role in communication. When he had face-to-face -face conversations, he made a conscious effort to observe the speaker's facial expressions, gestures, and eye movements. These nonverbal cues gave him additional context and helped him understand the emotional tone of the conversation. He found that when someone smiled while speaking, it usually meant they were being friendly or joking, even if he didn't fully understand the words. One major turning point came when Kevin realized that listening wasn't just about hearing words. It was about engaging with the conversation, connecting with the speaker, and responding in a way that showed he had truly understood. This shift in mindset made him more patient when listening and less anxious about his own ability to speak perfectly. He understood that active listening would not only improve his comprehension, but also make him a better conversation partner. By practicing active listening, Kevin began to see significant improvements in his ability to understand different accents and speech patterns. He became more confident in social settings, and his conversations with native speakers flowed more smoothly. While he still had moments of confusion or needed to ask for clarification, he was no longer overwhelmed by the speed or complexity of spoken English. As Kevin progressed through his five-month journey, active listening became one of the most powerful tools in his language learning arsenal. It allowed him to better connect with others, absorb the nuances of the language, and gradually become more fluent in both understanding and responding. Though he wasn't fluent by the end of his five months, his ability to listen actively and engage in meaningful conversations showed that he was well on his way. How to Practice Every Day One of the key elements of Kevin's journey to learning English was his daily practice routine. Early on, his teacher emphasized the importance of consistency in language learning. While big leaps in progress were exciting, it was the small, daily habits that would truly lead to long-term improvement. Kevin took this advice to heart and created a plan to practice English every day, no matter how busy he was. 
He realized that practicing every day didn't have to mean sitting down with a textbook for hours. Instead, he could integrate English into his everyday life in simple, practical ways. Here are the strategies Kevin used to practice English consistently. 1. Morning Routine Starting the Day with English Kevin made English a part of his morning routine. Each day, as soon as he woke up, he would spend 10 to 15 minutes practicing his speaking skills. He began by talking out loud to himself. Sometimes he would describe what he was going to do that day, and other times he would pretend to have a conversation with someone about a random topic. This helped him get into the habit of thinking in English from the very start of his day. He also used his phone's voice assistant in English. Instead of asking for the weather in his native language, he would ask in English. Over time, this became a natural part of his day, and it helped him practice formulating questions and sentences. Plus, it was a quick and easy way to engage with English without needing much extra time. 2. Short Breaks Listening and Reading During his lunch break at work or while commuting, Kevin would dedicate time to listening to podcasts or watching short videos in English. He knew that even 5 to 10 minutes of exposure would help him improve his listening skills over time. He also found it helpful to read short articles or news updates on his phone in English. Whether it was an article about technology or a fun story about sports, Kevin made sure to read something in English every day. To keep it interesting, he followed topics he was passionate about, like cricket and science fiction. This made the practice feel less like a chore and more like a part of his daily life. He also discovered that many news websites and apps had features where you could listen to articles being read out loud. Kevin often used this function to practice listening while reading along with the text. 3. Evening Routine Reflecting in English at the end of each day, Kevin would spend 15 to 20 minutes reflecting on his experiences in English. He kept a journal, writing down what he had done that day and how he felt. If he had a difficult or exciting conversation in English, he would write about it, noting any new words or phrases he had learned. This not only gave him a chance to practice his writing skills, but also helped him process and remember the new language he encountered. Kevin didn't worry about making mistakes in his journal. It was a private space where he could experiment and improve. Over time, he noticed that his writing became more fluid and natural as his vocabulary expanded. 4. Talking to himself, self-conversations. One of the unique ways Kevin practiced speaking was by talking to himself throughout the day. Whether he was cooking, cleaning, or walking to work, he would narrate what he was doing in English. If he was making dinner, he would say things like, now I'm chopping the onions, or I'll cook the pasta for 10 minutes. This habit helped Kevin get comfortable with forming sentences on the spot, even when no one was around to correct him. He treated it as an opportunity to train his brain to think in English. And because there was no pressure, it was a low-stress way to practice speaking. 5. Daily Conversations Practice with Native Speakers Kevin made it a goal to engage in at least one conversation in English every day. He didn't wait for formal opportunities. Instead, he looked for moments where he could practice naturally. Whether it was ordering food at a restaurant, asking a coworker a question, or chatting with a cashier at the store, Kevin always took advantage of opportunities to speak English. At first, he felt nervous about making mistakes, but over time, he realized that most people were kind and patient. These small, everyday conversations helped him gain confidence and improve his speaking ability. He learned new phrases, adjusted his pronunciation, and picked up on the way native speakers naturally constructed sentences. These daily interactions made a huge difference in his progress. 6. Language apps and flashcards. Quick vocabulary boost. To build his vocabulary, Kevin used language apps like Duolingo 
and digital flashcards. He made it a habit to spend at least 10 minutes each day reviewing new words. The apps allowed him to practice during moments of downtime, like when he was waiting for the bus or had a few free minutes at work. Flashcards were especially useful for learning tricky words that he encountered in conversations or while reading. Whenever he came across a word he didn't know, he would add it to his flashcard deck and review it during the week. This repetition helped solidify the words in his memory and made them easier to recall in future conversations. 7. Speaking Practice with Friends Another key part of Kevin's daily practice routine involved his practice partners. He joined a local English-speaking group and also connected with friends online who were learning English. Every day, he made an effort to chat with someone in English, whether it was through a video call, a voice message, or an in-person conversation. These conversations allowed Kevin to practice real-life English and get feedback from others. His friends would correct his grammar or suggest more natural ways to say things, which helped him continuously improve. Having regular practice with native and non-native speakers also made Kevin more confident in his ability to communicate in English. 8. Watching TV shows and movies in English After dinner, Kevin would unwind by watching an episode of his favorite TV show or a movie always in English. He found that watching shows with subtitles was incredibly helpful. At first, he would watch with English subtitles to match the spoken words with the text. Over time, as his listening improved, he began watching without subtitles to challenge himself. Watching TV shows gave Kevin exposure to natural speech and helped him learn slang, expressions, and everyday language. He loved shows that reflected daily life in the U.S. because they gave him a better understanding of the culture and helped him feel more connected to the people around him. By making English a part of his everyday life, Kevin was able to practice consistently without feeling overwhelmed. He didn't rely solely on traditional study methods. Instead, he found creative ways to integrate the language into his routine. Whether through speaking, listening, reading, or writing, he made sure to engage with English daily, which allowed him to make steady progress. Although Kevin wasn't fluent by the end of his five months, his dedication to daily practice brought him closer to his goal and gave him the confidence to continue improving. Staying Motivated The Challenges of Learning As Kevin continued his journey to learn English, he quickly realized that the road to fluency wasn't always easy. There were many moments when he felt frustrated, confused, and even discouraged. Learning a new language is a big challenge, and it's natural to encounter obstacles along the way. However, Kevin knew that staying motivated was key to his success. He needed to find ways to push through the difficult times and keep moving forward. 1. Facing the Challenges In his first few weeks in the United States, Kevin was full of excitement. He enjoyed practicing English, meeting new people, and discovering the culture. But as the weeks turned into months, he started facing challenges that tested his motivation. One of the biggest challenges was understanding native speakers. Although he practiced listening every day, Kevin found it difficult to keep up with fast conversations. Native speakers used slang, spoke quickly, and often had different accents, which made it hard for Kevin to follow everything they were saying. He felt embarrassed when he had to ask people to repeat themselves or slow down. Another challenge was fear of making mistakes. Kevin knew that making mistakes was a part of learning, but it didn't stop him from feeling nervous when speaking. Sometimes he would hesitate in conversations, worried that he might say something wrong or pronounce a word incorrectly. This fear made him self-conscious, and he started doubting his progress. 2. Dealing with doubts At one point, Kevin started to question whether he could really achieve his goal of speaking English fluently in five months. 
He compared himself to other learners who seemed to be improving faster, and this made him feel discouraged. He wondered if he was doing something wrong or if he simply wasn't good enough at learning languages. There were days when Kevin felt like giving up. After a tough day of struggling to communicate at work, he would come home feeling exhausted and defeated. He would think to himself, Why is this so hard? Maybe I'll never be fluent. However, instead of letting these negative thoughts control him, Kevin made a conscious decision to stay positive and keep going. He reminded himself why he started this journey in the first place, to open up new opportunities, to connect with people, and to challenge himself. His dream of mastering English was still alive, and he wasn't ready to give up just yet. 3. Finding Inspiration To overcome his doubts, Kevin needed to find new sources of motivation. He began seeking inspiration from people around him who had gone through similar experiences. He met other language learners who shared their own stories of struggling, but eventually succeeding. Hearing about their journeys helped Kevin realize that his challenges were normal and that every learner faces setbacks at some point. He also watched motivational videos online where polyglots, people who speak multiple languages, talked about their experiences learning new languages. They emphasized the importance of patience, persistence, and having fun with the process. Kevin was inspired by their advice and used it to refocus his energy. For setting smaller goals. One of the strategies that helped Kevin stay motivated was breaking his larger goal of fluency into smaller, achievable goals. Instead of focusing solely on becoming fluent in five months, Kevin decided to set weekly goals that were more realistic and measurable. For example, he set a goal to learn 10 new words each week and use them in sentences. Another goal was to have at least one conversation with a native speaker every day, even if it was just a short chat. By focusing on these smaller milestones, Kevin was able to track his progress more easily, and each small success gave him a sense of accomplishment. 5. Celebrating Small Wins Kevin learned the importance of celebrating small wins along the way. He realized that progress didn't always come in big, dramatic moments. Sometimes, it was the little things that showed him he was improving, like understanding a joke on TV or being able to order food at a restaurant without hesitation. Every time he noticed a small improvement, Kevin took a moment to celebrate. Whether it was learning a new phrase or finally being able to follow a conversation without getting lost, these small victories kept him motivated. He treated each step forward as a reason to keep going no matter how small it seemed. 6. Keeping a positive attitude Throughout his journey, Kevin made it a priority to stay positive, even when things got tough. He reminded himself that learning a language is a process, and it's okay to have ups and downs. Instead of focusing on what he couldn't do yet, Kevin chose to focus on what he had already achieved. This mindset shift helped him stay motivated and continue practicing every day. Whenever he felt discouraged, Kevin would remind himself of the reasons why he wanted to learn English in the first place. He thought about the exciting opportunities that speaking English could bring, like making new friends, advancing his career, and feeling more confident in everyday situations. These thoughts kept him focused on his long-term goals. Seven. Staying consistent. Kevin knew that consistency was the key to success, so he made a commitment to practice English every day, no matter what. Even on days when he didn't feel like it, he pushed himself to do something, whether it was listening to a podcast, watching a video, or practicing with a friend. He also learned to be kind to himself. If he had a bad day or made a mistake, he didn't let it discourage him. Instead, he treated each day as a fresh start and focused on doing better the next day. By staying consistent and keeping a positive attitude, 
Kevin was able to stay motivated and continue improving his English skills. 8. Visualizing his success One of the techniques that helped Kevin stay motivated was visualizing his future success. He would take a few minutes each day to imagine himself speaking English fluently. He pictured himself having smooth conversations with native speakers, giving presentations at work, and traveling confidently in English-speaking countries. This mental image gave Kevin the motivation he needed to keep going. Whenever he felt stuck or frustrated, he would close his eyes and visualize the future version of himself, speaking English with ease. This simple technique helped him stay focused on his goals and reminded him that all his hard work was leading him toward success. By facing his challenges head-on and finding creative ways to stay motivated, Kevin was able to keep moving forward, even during the toughest moments. Although the road to fluency wasn't easy, his determination, positive attitude, and commitment to daily practice helped him make steady progress. While he hadn't reached complete fluency by the end of his five months, Kevin was proud of how far he had come. He knew that with time, patience, and continued effort, he would eventually reach his goal. After five months, Kevin's progress. Five months had passed since Kevin first stepped foot in the United States, full of enthusiasm and high hopes to become fluent in English. Now, as he looked back on his journey, Kevin realized just how much he had learned and how far he had come. Though he hadn't yet achieved the full fluency he dreamed of, the progress he had made was remarkable. 1. Reflecting on the journey Kevin sat down one evening, thinking about his first day in America. Back then, simple conversations felt like a mountain to climb. He struggled to understand native speakers, and his mind raced to translate everything from his native language into English. Now, five months later, Kevin felt a sense of pride. He could communicate much more easily, engage in conversations, and even joke around with his coworkers. Ordering food at restaurants or asking for directions was no longer a stressful challenge. It had become second nature. He remembered how at the beginning of his journey, his goal was to be completely fluent in five months. Kevin laughed a little at his own ambition. Now he realized that fluency wasn't something that could be rushed. It was a long process, one that required patience, time, and continued practice. 2. The progress he made Although he hadn't reached complete fluency, Kevin had made significant strides in several areas of his English skills. For one, his confidence had skyrocketed. He no longer hesitated to speak up in conversations even when he wasn't sure if he was using the right words or grammar. The fear of making mistakes, which once held him back, had faded. Instead, he embraced those mistakes as learning opportunities. Kevin's listening skills had also improved dramatically. In the beginning, native speakers seemed to talk too fast for him to follow, but now he could understand most of what they were saying. He had gotten used to different accents and could even pick up on slang and idiomatic expressions. This gave him a new sense of belonging. He felt like he was no longer just an observer of English, but a participant in it. His vocabulary had expanded greatly, too. Through reading books, watching movies, and having conversations, Kevin had picked up many new words and phrases. He could now express himself much more clearly and precisely, though he knew there were still many words he hadn't learned yet. But he wasn't discouraged. Instead, he was excited about the idea of continuing to grow his vocabulary and deepen his understanding of the language. 3. What he learned about fluency During his five-month journey, Kevin had come to a new understanding of what fluency really meant. At first, he thought fluency was simply being able to speak without hesitation. But now, he realized that fluency was about much more than just speaking quickly or smoothly. It was about communication, 
being able to express ideas clearly, understand others, and engage in meaningful conversations. He saw that fluency wasn't an end goal, but a continuous process of improvement. Kevin also learned that fluency wasn't binary. It wasn't something you either had or didn't have. Instead, it existed on a spectrum. While he wasn't fully fluent yet, he was much closer than he had been five months ago, and that was a victory in itself. Fluency wasn't about being perfect, but about being able to communicate effectively, even if you made mistakes. Four challenges he still faced. Despite his progress, Kevin acknowledged that there were still areas he needed to work on. One of the biggest challenges was expressing complex thoughts or discussing abstract topics. While he could handle everyday conversations with ease, talking about more sophisticated subjects like politics or philosophy was still difficult. He often found himself searching for the right words or stumbling over sentences. He also recognized that while his speaking and listening skills had improved greatly, his writing still needed work. Writing emails for work or formal messages was a challenge, as he sometimes struggled with grammar and punctuation. But instead of feeling frustrated, Kevin saw this as another opportunity to grow. He knew that with more practice, he could strengthen his writing skills just as he had improved his speaking. Five. Looking ahead, Kevin knew that he hadn't reached his goal of full fluency, but he didn't see that as a failure. Instead, he saw it as part of the journey. He had come so far in just five months, and he knew that with continued effort, he would eventually reach the level of fluency he aspired to. The experience had taught him valuable lessons about persistence, patience, and the importance of consistent practice. One thing was certain. Kevin wasn't going to stop learning. He was more motivated than ever to continue improving his English. He planned to keep practicing every day, setting new goals for himself, and finding new ways to challenge his skills. Whether it was by reading more books, watching more English language media, or finding more people to practice with, Kevin was committed to his ongoing journey. 6. Celebrating the Progress most importantly, Kevin had learned to celebrate the progress he had made. Instead of focusing on what he hadn't achieved yet, he focused on how far he had come. The fact that he could now hold conversations, understand movies without subtitles, and make friends in a new language was a huge accomplishment. He reminded himself that fluency wasn't a race. It was a marathon and he was making steady progress every step of the way. 7. A new perspective on learning. Reflecting on the past five months, Kevin felt a deep sense of gratitude for the experience. Not only had he improved his English, but he had also gained a new perspective on learning itself. He realized that learning a language wasn't just about memorizing words or practicing grammar. It was about building connections challenging yourself, and embracing the process of growth. Kevin was no longer the same person he was when he first arrived in the United States. The journey had changed him, not just in terms of his language skills, but in how he approached learning and life in general. He had learned to be patient with himself, to celebrate small victories, and to keep pushing forward, even when things got tough. As Kevin reflected on his journey, he smiled, knowing that while the road to fluency was still ahead, he was well on his way. He wasn't discouraged by the challenges he still faced. He was motivated by them. The past five months had been a transformative experience, and he couldn't wait to see what the next chapter of his language learning journey would bring. As Kevin reflected on the past five months, he realized that his journey to fluency in English wasn't over. It was just beginning. The progress he had made was significant, but there was still much more to learn and experience. He understood now that language learning is a continuous process, one that doesn't have a final destination, but instead offers endless opportunities for growth. 
Kevin knew that he was on the right path. He had gained the tools, strategies, and confidence to continue improving his English. But most importantly, he had developed the right mindset. Instead of viewing fluency as a finish line he needed to cross, Kevin saw it as a journey that he would keep traveling for the rest of his life. 1. The Road Ahead Kevin accepted that learning English wasn't something that could be completed in a set amount of time. He was no longer in a rush to become perfectly fluent. He recognized that the small, steady improvements he made each day were just as important as the big milestones. Whether it was learning a new word, improving his listening skills, or gaining more confidence in conversations, Every step forward brought him closer to his goals. He was excited for the road ahead. He looked forward to continuing to immerse himself in the English language and culture, to making new friends, and to expanding his understanding of the world through the lens of a new language. The challenges he faced were no longer discouraging. They were motivating. He knew that with each new obstacle, he was growing stronger as a language learner. 2. Never Stop Learning Kevin had learned a valuable lesson during his five-month journey, Never Stop Learning. He realized that the key to success wasn't reaching a specific level of fluency. It was maintaining a consistent practice and a positive attitude. He planned to keep reading, watching, and speaking English as much as possible always looking for new ways to challenge himself and improve. He had developed a deep love for learning, one that extended beyond language. The process of learning English had taught him patience, perseverance, and the importance of staying motivated, even when the path seemed difficult. 3. Encouraging Others Cabin's journey wasn't just about his own progress. It was about inspiring others as well. He wanted to encourage fellow learners to keep going, no matter where they were on their journey. He knew from experience that it was easy to get frustrated or feel discouraged, but he also knew that those who kept pushing forward would eventually see the results they were looking for. Don't give up, Kevin would say to anyone starting out. It may feel tough at first, but the more you practice, the easier it gets. Fluency doesn't happen overnight, but if you stay committed, you'll be amazed at how much you can achieve. Conclusion Your Closer Than You Think Cabin Story is a reminder that learning a language is a journey, not a race. Fluency takes time, dedication, and a lot of practice, but every effort you put in brings you one step closer to your goal. So, if you're working on your English, keep going. Whether it takes five months, a year, or even longer, you're making progress every day. Remember, Kevin didn't achieve complete fluency in five months, but he made incredible strides. He gained confidence, developed his skills, and most importantly, discovered a passion for learning. You can do the same. The key is to stay motivated, practice consistently, and celebrate every bit of progress you make along the way. Before we wrap up, I want to say this. Learning English is a journey, and every step you take brings you closer to fluency. Just like Kevin, you might face challenges and moments of doubt, but remember, you're not alone in this. We're in this together. So, if you're serious about improving your English and you want more tips, stories, and strategies to help you on your journey, make sure to subscribe to the channel. By subscribing, you'll be the first to know when new videos come out and you'll never miss an opportunity to keep learning and improving. Learning a language can feel overwhelming at times, but staying consistent is the key. Every video on this channel is here to support you, motivate you, and help you grow as an English speaker. So don't hesitate. Hit that subscribe button and let's continue learning together. And if this video inspired you or helped you in any way, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others who are also working on their English. Finally, leave a comment below with your own language learning goals or experiences.
Let's create a community of learners who can support each other. Remember, fluency doesn't happen overnight, but if we keep going step by step, we'll get there. See you in the next video.